So what is the mechanism of action of melatonin? This is going to be the topic of our uh, video today because uh, melatonin is one of those special molecules that might have a very influential role in protecting your immune system. And this is a topic that was introduced to me via one of our COVID Q&A events because these COVID Q&A events, they are kind of evolving towards presenting information with regards to how we can protect our immune systems with alternative therapies or how we could be destroying spike protein and so on, or potentially information with how we can uh, protect our immune system with, with uh, healthy food. So as a consequence, because the variety of different articles are being introduced to me, I get to study them and then I get to learn some interesting stuff. And uh, melatonin, I got to review for um, one of the last events and I thought it was such interesting information I wanted to share it with you. So what is melatonin? First of all, it is an antioxidant molecule. So what does that mean? It means it can trap those toxic reactive chemicals such as reactive oxygen species or reactive nitrogen species or reactive uh, lipid species. And uh, these are very dangerous because they're mutagenic. They can destroy genetic information, genetic material. They can destroy um, proteins and so on. They play their role in protecting us uh, during something like, say, infection. In fact, that's one of the ways how we can destroy the genetic material of invading pathogens. But you can now see that overproduction this under chronic conditions could also be toxic to us because you can also destroy your own genetic material in that way. This is one of the reasons, one of many reasons why you do not want to have um, constant experiencing constant inflammation. So that's uh, basically what uh, melatonin can trap. But really where the magic of melatonin comes in is its ability to it's targeted to, to mitochondria, so its ability to protect mitochondria. Now, what are mitochondria? So let's unpack this a little bit. Those are special organelles um, that basically produce energy molecules or really molecules that think of can be used as a fuel for uh, all of the cells by the body. These are called ATPs. You can think of them like a coal that is used for combustion so then you can think of ATP molecules are being used in order to drive mechanistic actions throughout the body in different areas of the body and uh, mitochondria are absolutely dependent of course they're the ones to, uh, that produce it and viruses many viruses including SARS-CoV-2 virus can target mitochondria in order to prevent it from properly functioning. And the reason why viruses want to do this is because by affecting proper functioning of mitochondria, this can influence how mitochondria will produce these ATPs and will af affect metabolism of different chemicals. And that will affect some of the immune reactions, including the innate immune uh, innate immune system that's basically so the viruses can protect themselves in such a way how do the viruses achieve this they achieve this by being able to by being able to by affecting the mitochondria basically it affects the polar polarization of the mitochondria so what does that mean basically it means that the mitochondrial membrane has a specific electric charge so it has one type of charge on one side of the membrane and a different charge on the other side of the membrane and this is needed in order for the proper production of of atp because this different charm charge on the membranes allows mitochondria allows electrons to be transported through the membrane through specific channels and during the production of atp so when you when you prevent the proper structure of mitochondria and you will affect that polarization of the membrane you will affect the ability of mitochondria to properly produce atp and this is basically how viruses can affect the mitochondria and that's one of the reasons why mitochondrial diseases are so toxic now melatonin because it's targeted to mitochondria it can preserve that function and uh, preserve the production of atp which is needed then for preserving of that innate immune system function so this basically the magic of of mela, melatonin okay so to give you an example certain immune cells um, 
such as white blood cells called leukocytes, they are the ones who need proper mitochondria function in order to trigger that innate immune system which uses interferons and interferon immune system is one of the earliest immune systems that is preserved among vertebrates which is basically instant upon the infection so this interferon molecules can then target specific genes and by being able to target specific genes it can make different cells um, function in such a way so that they will reduce uh, the ability of virus to both reproduce within a cell as well as spread between cells. So this is clearly very, very important and melatonin can preserve this function by basically preserving, preserving the mitochondria. I can tell you also that melatonin is ubiquitous. So this is a molecule that is found in all types of cells ever studied and it's believed to be present in entire, in entire cellular kingdom. So all types of cells are believed to have uh, to be able to have melatonin in it, in them that have ever been looked at. So that's another interesting component of it. So what else I can tell you is that uh, another aspect that is interesting of melatonin, remember I was mentioning uh, before that uh, both DNA as well as RNA can be methylated. And this is one of the ways that, uh, that the genetic material is regulated. So by, for example, methylating DNA, this is called epigenetic regulation. So you add methyl group on top of DNA. So you're not changing the, the chemical composition of the DNA. You're just adding removable compound on top of it. You can determine whether the DNA is being used or not. And RNA can be methylated as well and, and its use can be regulated in such a way as well. And um, uh, in one of the videos, I actually mentioned that uh, the epigenetic regulation it was actually used for um, for uh, looking at that certain animals, mice, basically can pass on their immune immune uh, reactions or um, immune response to their offspring through epi through regulation of epigenetic information. So. We don't know if that happens in humans and we don't really know to what degree life experience could be passed on to humans in such a in such manner. But clearly uh, this is definitely being observed in animals. That's just one example of how epigenetic information can be regu regulated and, and influencing um, what's happening biologically. But uh, the, one of the ways you can regulate epigenetic information is certain transposable elements within our genome. So we have in our genome um, transposable elements, meaning they can move around. One of the most famous one is called line one. I can't remember what it stands for. I think it stands for long interspersed uh, nucleotide elements, but <laughs> I probably got the name wrong. Line one, I did talk about it in one of my videos because the genetic proteins made from this genetic material what they can actually do is they can reinsert their own RNA back into the genome so they can simply, so that they can continuously reintroduce themselves into the genome and as a consequence, they modulate the, the genome. Now, sometimes they can also introduce other genetic material and one of the controversies is, is that it was shown in a, in a laboratory test that certain cancerous cells where the line one elements were activated, the actual RNA vaccine was successfully reintroduced into the genome of those cells. Now, this is a controversial result. I would not take it seriously until this type of result is duplicated. And uh, so don't believe that this is necessarily happening in vivo. It's not expected to happen in vivo at all. But we do know that when you do activate line one elements, it can lead to, to cancer because it can affect the genome stability and it can uh, lead to damage of DNA as well. Now, typically, normally line one elements are heavily repressed, meaning the regions around line one ele elements are heavily methylated. So they're epigenetic, epigenetically regulated. And basically that means they're not really used, but sometimes, that can be derepressed. And one of the ways you can derepress these elements is through those reactive uh, 
toxic chemicals such as reactive oxygen species. So here it is again, this is if you have a malfunctioning mitochondria, you could produce these elements and, and that's how melatonin could be protecting um, cells as well um, from um, unnecessary derepression of these line one elements. Now what is interesting is that in certain COVID, um, COVID patients, it was known that uh, there is a very um, very substantial change in the epigenetic component of the of uh, of the genomes of, of certain cells and when they studied this one third of that change was actually related to line one elements so the uh, line one elements were being derepressed so heavy reactivation of line one elements so definitely potentially dangerous right so that's potentially another way of how melatonin could be protecting uh, uh, as well. Now, there has been some clinical studies with the use of melatonin. One such study showed that um, patients who were using standard therapy for treatment of severe COVID, approximately around almost 20% of those patients who were being treated died. But in the same group, the treatment option that also on top of that included melatonin, only approximately 1% of, of individuals died. So massive difference. Another, and uh, they, they were taking approximately 10 megs of melatonin, um, 10 milligrams. In another study uh, of COVID-19 patients, um, when the patients were taking somewhere between 35 to 70 milligrams of melatonin in four different doses, they were able to show that they had much better recovery and um, much more reduced likelihood of, of prolonged hospitalization. So um, there is some clinical um, evidence supporting that melatonin could indeed help against COVID-19. Now, one more thing that I wanted to add about melatonin is there, there was another review that was given to me by the participants of this COVID-Q19 event. And uh, this, this uh, review talked about the potential benefits of autophagy and uh, melatonin promoting it. Now, what is autophagy? This is a cellular process that helps the cells remove toxic material uh, and debris from, from, uh, from the cells. So what happens is the cell starts building a membrane around the toxic stuff that want, the cell wants to remove. That's what is called autophagosome and then autophagosome then fuses with another comp cellular compartment that has destructive agents that's called lysosome and then once that fusion takes place the contents of autophagosome will be destroyed so cells can use that to protect themselves and sometimes sometimes it, uh, cells will even um, will even um, determine whether they will survive or not through the use of this process uh, depending on how much damage the, the cell has experienced, okay? So, um, so clearly autophagy is a very important process. Now, uh, I made a video on fasting a long time ago, and I remember that I forgot to mention that, that, that there has been studies showing that fasting, for example, helps to preserve autophagy um, process, biological process. So I thought I might have had it right now. Now, the authors of that review mentioned that they believe that melatonin helps to preserve autophagy biological process as well. And as a consequence, many of the diseases actually might have disruption to proper levels of melatonin. So when you have um, reduced levels of melatonin, this is a process that can be observed in aging, in cancer, as well as viral infection. And um, so how can, can um, can melatonin protect the autophagy process that, that, that is important in, in maintaining proper health of the cells as well. Number one, I already mentioned, it's the reactive oxygen species. They can affect the proteins that are, are required for proper building of the autophagosome. So if they are being affected, then you will not be able to build proper autophagosomes and that can lead to some of these complications and diseases. So this is one way. And of course, as I already mentioned, melatonin can help protect mitochondria to prevent that from happening. But another one is um, the fact that um, another very disruptive process that, that to, to the cells is, is um, disruption to the proper 
proper function of endoplasmic reticulum. Now, what is endoplasmic reticulum? is a specific cellular organelle that ensures that proteins that are being built inside the cells are folded properly. So if you prevent that cell from being, pro uh, if you prevent that organelle from properly functioning, you might obviously affect the stability of the cell because you might lead to disruption of, of um, proper protein folding and proper building of proteins. And that's another way how you can then affect production of autophagosomes. And then again, melatonin could be, could be protecting uh, that uh, process as well. So many different interesting ways how melatonin could be helping cells. So I thought I'd mention this for you. Sorry about all of the noise, <laughs> incessant helicopters around, unfortunately. And, uh, but uh, hopefully the video will be okay. I wanted to say thank you, as always, to everyone for the support of the channel. Thank you for all the questions. Thank you for sharing. So please continue to do so. This is how we grow. Um, thank you for helping me with speaking scientific information. I can't keep up with everything, but uh, I do try to follow up on this because obviously I do like uh, these good ideas for some of this content. I really did enjoy this one, for example. And, um, and, and I hope we get to see some of you in the another installment of COVID Q&A event. Um, and if you want free tickets to that, uh, subscribe to our newsletter. And uh, link to the subscription is available in the description below. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next installment. And uh, finally, remember, stay active uh, and, uh, in order to protect your own immune system in the best way possible. Bye, everyone.